My name is Lily Romero, and this course is Monitoring Oncology Clinical Trials, Unique Aspects and Challenges. Learning objectives are simple. We want to identify the differences, if there are any, between monitoring oncology early phase clinical trials versus later phase clinical trials. Identify, identify ways in which the oncology clinical trials differ from those in other therapeutic areas. Look at the complexities of adverse events and serious adverse event monitoring in oncology clinical trials. Learning to utilize the common terminology criteria for adverse events or the CTCAE grading and then apply that to adverse event source data and address common challenges in monitoring and applying tools and techniques to overcome them. We really want to, in this first module, define the roles and responsibility of the sponsor, monitor, investigators as they relate to the quality of oncology clinical trials. And that's a key word is quality. I know that it's you know, a word that we use a lot. It's, we always nod to it. And then interestingly enough, sometimes in the heat of things and in trying to get everything done, we feel, I know that I've felt many times as a monitor that it's kind of like, you know, there's just too much to do that it's difficult to do a quality job. So, so from experience with monitoring and the monitoring oncology trials will kind of give you tips on how to be able to manage that a little bit better or to give you ideas in terms of management and then understanding the roles and responsibilities of sponsor monitor in the oncology trials is the yeah, second piece to this. So module one, let's talk about good clinical practice requirements, which you cannot avoid that topic when you are talking about clinical research. So the sponsor should designate appropriately trained and qualified individuals to monitor the progress of clinical investigations, and that the sponsor should establish written procedures for monitoring of clinical investigations. If you would please raise your, raise your hand so we can call on you, or you can go ahead and you know, send a chat through. What does appropriately trained mean specifically in oncology trials? And if you'd like to go ahead and address this too, or if you want to take this on, why might monitoring for oncology be different from other types of studies? Now, not fair that we should make this already a uh, we should we start the interaction this early. Jerry says would need training in specifics like resist. And I assume that's C T C A E. Yes, definitely. Gail, one time in. Thank you, Terry. Let's tackle the first one, which is appropriately trained. What does that mean in oncology trials? The great thing about this statement, and it's always sort of the beauty of the regulatory, um, you know, of the regulatory requirements or TCP requirements, is that it's often so broad-based. And so appropriately trained is going to be left up to the sponsor. Many times with the sponsor, I've worked for clients where they trained me and I still feel like I need a little bit more. <laughs> you know, I just feel like I'm going in not quite as uh, trained as I probably should have been. It does not mean that you have to be an expert in it. So the expectation is one, certainly that you would be, as a monitor, know all about good clinical practice, um, know all about what is required for your particular study, and you would know this through the monitoring plan and through any of the other you know, plans that are in place that you need to follow. And then in terms of the oncology therapeutic area, yes, the expectation would be, and you should expect that, the expectation would be that you are trained in, number one, the therapeutic area. So a little bit of an overview. I think one of the areas where they miss a lot is where I shouldn't say misalop, where it uh, can be a little bit more robust would be the types of medications and the classifications and what the expectation if there are any sort of types of side effects that are expected with uh, medications that the subjects may be using as part of their, part of their uh, cancer treatment. Third part would be the types of procedures that they might be undergoing that they would have undergone in the past. And then the fourth, obviously, with the therapeutic area and, you know, certainly about the drug. What is the classification? What are the expectations? What kind of adverse events and such? And, you know, I know they say you can read the investigator brochure, but many times if it can just be put into a number of slides or into a training session, it just makes it so much easier and really good in terms of referring to. And I think that if you are one of those that is actually that is actually going to be doing a lot of training, for example, if you're one of the leads, if you're a project manager, that initial investment, I know it takes a lot of time to cut this work, 
Um, I know it takes time to get everybody trained up, and then I know it takes time to follow up and make sure you get all of your documentation that the training has occurred. That initial amount of time is so really worth it. And I do want to acknowledge, um, Stephen said oncology is more difficult than other diseases, certainly because we look at how complicated it can be, and it usually is. Um, we may be looking at different types of endpoints depending on these. Death may actually be an endpoint, or it may be one of those that you're just going to be following for a very, very long time, which in itself also creates another, you know, group of, you know, another set of issues that you as a monitor or you as a project manager or even you as a coordinator have to really be thinking about. So, you know, we'll talk about that in, as we go through this session.